Well, it's been a while since I made a last video. I guess it was the, uh, I guess it hasn't been that long. It was what, uh, maybe three weeks ago we went out on Lake Wilderness with the uh, modified uh, uh, seat on the, uh, strengthened seat on the Nymph with the, the new six foot oars. Uh, but it's back, you can see we got a test tank video coming up. And I don't remember if I've, I've got to go back and look, but uh, to see if I've done it. But this was the 14 foot Padilla Bay. Uh, the 12-foot version I just posted here this spring. Uh, the, the plans and the free download for the study plans for it. But this is the, the bigger brother, the 14-foot version, which I'm probably going to have a couple different interiors. Uh, one will have regular seating side to side, and one of them, I believe, uh, when you start getting into a 14-foot boat, you get, the boats are bigger, so you can start uh, installing regular uh, combing seat, you know, seats around the, uh, the daggerboard trunk. Uh, in the middle, make it a little more of a sailboat than a, than a rowing sailing boat or just a plain rowing boat on its own. But the other one I just just finished here yesterday, the last design on was the uh, my 14-foot uh, duck boat, and I'm calling it the John Duck. And I'll have a model a PDF model you can download and build uh, full color uh, here uh, probably in a couple weeks, and with a little bit of description on it. But I wanted to get uh, a uh, tank test on it uh, and I brought out all the the Penny brothers and they're uh, Canadians eh so uh, let me get on with this and you'll see in the background that the uh, barn's got a new red uh, red roof on it before we go into that let me show you the metal roof I put on too so I'm kind of set for the next 25 years even though you know, I'm long in the tooth and gray in the face to, to worry about a warranty on that so I'll show you this well there you can see the brand new paint job and the new uh, champion metal uh, snap lock raised wood raised rib roofing and they got the uh, nut hatch the nymph and the Laura Bay hanging under the eaves which I found was a good way to keep them out of the way and dry and uh, debris free so it's just, I got a little block and tackle that lets me uh, take them down off the barn and onto the wheels. Either the, uh, the ones for the nymph, the, the, the little uh, two by three, or the regular longer dagger board, or the new uh, uh, pintle uh, uh, wheel set. So let's go back to the uh, tank test. Have the hull in the water with no weights in it. And looks like maybe the uh, transom panel may be in the water by an inch. And the bow, the very bottom of the bow seems to be setting right at the surface. And right in here, the water level is at the seam line between the uh, first and second panel off the flat bottom so that's pretty good let's go ahead and put some people in it there's one person bow go down about an inch stern maybe Transom's about two inches. Still about that seam. I got a bulkhead in the way here, so I can't get too far back. So let's um, put somebody in the transom. In the back seat. And move this guy up to the front seat. Okay, that... Leveled the hull out again, man. Move him a little farther forward. There, we're back in trim. Bottom is perfectly flat in the water. And even with two people, we're still at about that seam line there. So we're starting to notice the emergent inch thing here. They're getting more weight in it. It's going down, but the volume on this hull increases sub sub substantially. 
as it lowers into the water that you don't notice that much of a of a change let's put a third person back in there we got three people one two three and we're setting level in the water again let me get back here maybe a little light in the bow So I'd be with three people in it. So I'm quite happy. She's still floating. Now I got to, um, I'm going to turn this off for a second so I can get my tape measure out and measure these distances. And then on the John Duck, I've added some tape to uh, keep everybody honest. Uh, flat bottom, uh, all the way through. Uh, a lot of duck boats are flat bottom. I don't like flat bottom boats, and the Coast Guard doesn't either because uh, of the limitations on the horsepower on the outboards. So I modified a little bit. This is kind of like a, a bottom I have had off the very first boat I ever designed, the uh, the Granville Bay, and um, or not the Granville Bay, but the uh, the ten foot um, um, Hudson Springs Pram. Uh, the original design I had was a V and the guy didn't want it, he wanted a flat bottom so then I modified it to this and he didn't like it so I made it the bottom wider and wider and then finally I just said okay to hell with it, you know, I'll give you a flat bottom if you fall out of your boat then that's your problem. So uh, I like these, um, flat, well, I'll go with the flat bottom with the seams down the side because these seams give you some extra strength uh, like a beam when it's pushing down on here. These the forces are put out to the sides and then there's enough internal um, uh, guff, uh, uh, framing to uh, distribute the loads around so and then this this wider bottom piece here will probably be uh, either three eighths or maybe even a half an inch for those that want to you know pound on things but it'll be easier when you come ashore because you'll have a flat bottom and you won't be tipping one side or the other but as opposed to a very f perfectly flat bottom, uh, you will get a little bit of motion out of it. But when you're standing on the gunnels, it's not going to go bloop, which a flat bottom will do to you. So let's get back into the test here. One of the things I also did, I changed the, uh, the way the sides panels are laid out to make it easier on construction. So the only difficult part will be these uh, curvy sections down here. And they're not only one side is really curvy so that thing just barely <laughs> it just floats on the water hardly anything under underwater okay let's put some some penny brothers in here canadians eh and let's let's see where's the small one at I'll put an outboard in put that on the transom uh, makes a squat a little bit. You can see how the transom went down, but the sides are still still up. So let's put on a. Is that the biggest guy? Yeah. Put one there. We'll put a buddy over here. So that brings us back down a little a little flatter in there. If you got a fuel tank or another, maybe this guy up here will set up closer to the bow. Depends on how you have your, your seating set up. So if you got a guy back here and a guy up in the front, you're pretty much level again. And then you can stick a side seat in. You can put another third person in move that guy up a little farther. I mean, the boat's big enough you can have all kinds of, of uh, seating arrangements. Usually what I'll have here is uh, a false bulkhead. A little bit ahead of the the transom and then just to carry the loads and also to keep from splashing over from being pooped if you stop suddenly and then some gussets between the two to to absorb some of the uh, stresses on the on the outboards putting on the hull and then a box seat on each side with a pedal swivel pedestal and then box seats in the middle on either side with a, a, ri a raised platform there's my other hand raised platform in the middle and you can hide the fuel tank underneath there and then 
probably a seat up in the front and who knows maybe a, a, a small deck up there with a hatch uh, to uh, put buoys and things in so okay that's enough of that I'm gonna go uh, measure off where my people placement is and um, I also want to see what happens when all the weight is on one side everybody says oh look over there and there is the um, the hull and you see with three people those are 200 pound plus people probably around two and a quarter they're all over on the same side of the boat so you can see how much is tipped and it's still a lot of uh, freeboard so, let's put one more guy in there say there's four people looking at mermaids so, so it's a fairly stable boat okay, everybody's back in the boat again and I wanted to setting uh, one in the back the engine one on either side and one to bow uh, there's quite a bit of quite a bit of pressure here. Let me stack these guys. <laughs> Just for grins, I got all the guys out. And so we got the tape measure here and we got our five Canadians. Let's go ahead and put the tape measure in there and this thing weighs a lot more than the the five Molson drinking Canadians do. And we still got got some pretty good freeboard still in the transom. And even up in the bow there we're still not submerged so it's got some volume. Got a pretty good beam to it too so I think it should be uh, a boat that uh, should be able to make fairly easily. There's nothing really difficult on it, and if you don't want to spend a small fortune on buying a, uh, a duck boat from, say, StarCraft or uh, what is those companies, uh, LumaCraft or any of those guys, uh, do it yourself with a John Duck. So. Plan should probably be up in a couple months, so I'll see you guys later.